spleen, pancreas, and liver. Introduction, spleen, Greek spleen and Latin lean, is a lymphatic organ connected to the blood vascular system. It acts as a filter for blood and plays an important role in the immune responses of the body. Spleen, dissection. Locate the spleen situated deep in the left hypochondrium. The gastrophrenic ligament has already been cut during removal of stomach. Now cut through the posteriorly placed lionorenal ligament taking care of the splenic vessels contained therein. See the close relation of spleen to the left costodiaphragmatic recess and the left lung. Identify the viscera related to the spleen, e.g. stomach, tail of pancreas, left kidney, and splenic flexure of colon. Trace the branches of splenic artery into the substance of spleen as far as possible. Cut the phrenicoccalic ligament of peritoneum and deliver the spleen from the abdominal cavity. Location, the spleen, Latin low spirits, is a wedge-shaped organ lying mainly in the left hypochondrium, and partly in the epigastrium. It is wedged in between the fundus of the stomach and the diaphragm. The spleen is tetrahedral in shape. Dimensions The spleen is soft, highly vascular, and dark purple in color. The size and weight of the spleen are markedly variable. On an average the spleen is 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters thick, 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters broad, 5 inches or 12.5 centimeters long, 7 ounces in weight, and is related to 9th to 11th ribs. The odd numbers are 1, 3, 5 are 7, 9, 11. Normally, the spleen is not palpable. Position, Axis of Spleen The spleen lies obliquely along axis of the 10th rib. Thus it is directed downwards, forwards, and laterally, making an angle of about 45 degrees with the horizontal plane. External Features The spleen has two ends, three borders and two surfaces and two angles and hilum. Two ends. The anterior or lateral end is expanded and is more like a border. It is directed downwards and forwards, and reaches the mid-axillary line. The posterior or medial end is rounded. It is directed upwards, backwards, and medially, and rests on the upper pole of the left kidney. Three borders. The superior border is characteristically notched near the anterior end. The anterior border is rounded. The intermediate border is also rounded and is directed to the right. Two surfaces. The diaphragmatic surface is convex and smooth. Two angles. Anterobasal angle. It is the junction of superior border with lateral or anterior end. It is the most forward projecting part of spleen. When spleen is enlarged, this is felt virus so this is called as clinical of spleen. Posterobasal angle, junction of inferior border with lateral or anterior end of spleen. Hilum. Hilum lies between superior and intermediate borders. It is pierced by branches and tributaries of splenic vessels. Relations Peritoneal relations The spleen is surrounded by peritoneum and is suspended by following ligaments. L. The gastrosplenic ligament extends from the hilum of the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach. It contains the short gastric vessels and associated lymphatics and sympathetic nerves. 2. The lionorenal ligament extends from the hilum of the spleen to the anterior surface of the left kidney. It contains the tail of the pancreas the splenic vessels, lymphatics and sympathetic nerves. 3. The fernicocolic ligament is not attached to the spleen, but supports its anterior end. It is a horizontal fold of peritoneum extending from the splenic flexure of colon to the diaphragm opposite the 11th rib in the mid-axillary line. It limits the upper end of the left paracolic gutter. Visceral relations. Visceral surface, the visceral surface is related to the fundus of the stomach, the anterior surface of the left kidney, the splenic flexure of the colon and the tail of the pancreas. The GA5 tephic impression, for the fundus of the stomach, lies between the superior and intermediate borders. It is the largest and most concave impression on the spleen. The renal impression, for the left kidney, lies between the inferior and intermediate borders. The colic impressions, for the splenic flexure of the colon, 
occupies a triangular area adjoining the anterior end of spleen. Its lower part is related to the vernicocolic ligament. The pancreatic impression, for the tail of the pancreas, lies between the hilum and the colic impression. The hilum lies on the iriferomedial part of the gastric impression along the long axis of the spleen. It transmits the splenic vessels and nerves, and provides attachment to the gastrosplenic and lionorenal ligaments. Diaphragmatic surface, the diaphragmatic surface is related to the diaphragm which separates the spleen from the costodiaphragmatic recess of pleura, lung, and 9th, 10th and 11th ribs of the left side. Arterial supply, the spleen is supplied by the splenic artery which is g the largest branch of the coeliac trunk. The artery is tortuous in its course to allow for movements of the spleen. It passes through the lionorenal ligament to reach the hilum of the spleen where it divides into five or more branches. These branches enter the spleen to supply it. Within the spleen it divides repeatedly to form successfully the straight vessels called penicilli, which further divide into ellipsoids and arterial capillaries. Further course of the blood is controversial. According to closed theory of splenic circulation, the capillaries are continuous with the venous sinusoids that lie in the red pulp the sinusoids join together to form veins. However, according to open theory of splenic circulation, the capillaries end by opening into the red pulp from where the blood enters the sinusoids through their walls. Still others believe in a compromise theory, where the circulation is apparent in distended spleen and closed in contracted spleen. The splenic circulation is adapted for the mechanism of separation and storage of the red blood cells. On the basis of its blood supply, the spleen is said to have superior and inferior vascular segments. The two segments are separated by an avascular plane. Each segment may be subdivided into one to two disc-like middle segments and a cap-like pole segment. Apart from its terminal branches, the splenic artery gives off a numerous branches to the pancreas. B5 to 7 short gastric branches. See the left gastroepiploic artery. Venous drainage. The splenic vein is formed at the hilum of the spleen. It runs a straight course behind the pancreas. It joins the superior mesenteric vein behind the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein. Its tributaries are the short gastric 1F gastroepiploic, pancreatic, and inferior mesenteric veins. Lymphotic drainage. Splenic tissue proper has no lymphatics. A few lymphatics arise from the connective tissue of the capsule and trabeculae and drain into the pancreaticosplenic lymph nodes situated along the splenic artery. Nerve supply. Sympathetic fibers are derived from the coeliac plexus. They are vasomotor in nature. They also supply some smooth muscle present in the capsule. Functions of the spleen. 1. Phagocytosis. The spleen is an important component of the reticuloendothelial system. The splenic phagocytes include a. the reticular cells and free macrophages of the red pulp, b. modified reticular cells of the ellipsoids, c. free macrophages and endothelial cells of the venous sinusoids, and d. surface reticular cells of the lymphatic follicle. The phagocytes present in the organ remove cell debris and old and effete RBCs, other blood cells and microorganisms and thus filter the blood. Phagocytosis of circulating antigens initiates humoral and cellular immune responses. 2. Hemopoiesis, the spleen is an important hemopoietic organ during fetal life. Lymphopoiesis continues throughout life. The lymphocytes manufactured in it take part in immune responses of the body. In the adult spleen, hemopoiesis can restart in certain diseases, like chronic myeloid leukemia and myelosclerosis. For gin mite responses, under antigenic stimulation, there occurs increased lymphopoiesis for cellular responses, and increased formation of plasma cells for the humoral responses. 5. Storing of RBCS, red blood cells can be stored in the spleen and released into the circulation when needed. This function is better marked in animals than in man. 6. Histology Histologically spleen is made up of the following four supporting fibroelastic tissue, forming the capsule, coarse trabeculae, and a fine reticulum. In human, the smooth muscle cells in the capsule and trabeculae are few, 
and the contraction and distension of spleen are attributed to constriction or relaxation of the blood vessels, which regulate the blood flow in the organ. 7. White pulp consisting of lymphatic nodules arranged around an arteriole called malpighian corpuscle. 8. Red pulp is formed by the collection of cells in the interstices of reticulum, in between the sinusoids. The cell population includes, 1. All types of lymphocytes, small, medium, and large, 2. All three types of blood cells, RBC, WBC, and platelets and the fixed and free macrophages. Lymphocytes are freely transformed into plasma cells which can produce large amounts of antibodies the immunoglobulins. Vascular system transverses the organ and permeates it thoroughly. Development Spleen develops in the mesoderm in the cephalic part of left layer of dorsal mesogastrium. The development occurs during sixth week of intrauterine life. Number of nodules develop which soon fuse to form a lobulated spleen. Notching of the superior border of the adult spleen is an evidence of its multiple origin. These nodules which fail to fuse, form accessory spleens. Figure 23.4 shows the usual sites of accessory spleens. Accessory spleens or spleniculi these may be found, one in the derivatives of the dorsal mesogastrium. i.e. gastrosplenic ligament, lionorenal ligament, gastrophrenic ligament, and greater omentum. Two in the broad ligament of the uterus. Three in the spermatic cord. Clinical palpation of the spleen, a normal spleen is not palpable. An enlarged spleen can be felt under the left costal margin during inspiration. Palpation is assisted by turning the patient to his right side. Note that the spleen becomes palpable only after it has enlarged to about twice its normal size. Splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen is called splenomegaly. It may occur in a number of diseases. Sometimes the spleen becomes very large. It then projects towards the right iliac fossa in the direction of the axis of the 10th rib. Splenectum, surgical removal of the spleen is called splenectomy. During this operation damage to the tail of the pancreas has to be carefully avoided, as the tail of pancreas is very rich in islets of Langerhans. Spleen has two pedicles, gastrosplenic and lionorenal. Their contents are separated carefully before the ligaments are cut. Splenic puncture spleen can be punctured through the 8th or 9th intercostal space in the mid-axillary line using a lumbar puncture needle. When enlarged, it can be punctured through the mid-axillary line. To avoid laceration of spleen, the patient must hold his breath during the procedure. Intrasplenic pressure is an indirect record of the e-portal pressure. Splenic venography reveals and confirms the enlarged portosystemic communication in cases of portal hypertension. Splenic infarction, the smaller branches of splenic artery are end arteries. Their obstruction, embolism, therefore, results in splenic infarction which causes referred pain in the left shoulder, CARES sign. Spleen is in danger of trauma to the left lower thoracic cage especially 9, 10, 11th ribs. A ruptured spleen may cause severe hemorrhage, as it has a rich blood supply. Referred pain, pain of splenic tissue is poorly localized. It is also referred to the epigastrium. Stretch of the splenic capsule produces localized pain in the posterior part of left upper quadrant, hypochondrium. Spirin, if there is a small tear in the spleen, it can be sutured with catgut and the greater omentum can be wrapped round the sutured tear. Partial splenectomy. Since there are segmental branches of the splenic artery, only one segment can be removed according to the state of spleen. After splenectomy, Spleen can be cut into small pieces and these can be implanted within the greater omentum. Because of vascularization, spleen survives and does its function of producing the antibodies. Pancreas Pancreas, Dissection Identify the pancreas a retroperitoneal organ lying transversely across the posterior abdominal wall. Head is easily identifiable in the concavity of duodenum. Uncinate process of the head is the part behind the upper part of superior mesenteric artery. Portal vein is formed behind its neck. Rest of the part extending to the left is its body and tail reaching till the hilum of spleen. Turn the descending part of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas to the left. 
look for the posterior pancreatic otoadenal vessels and the bile duct on the head of the pancreas. Expose the structures posterior to pancreas. Turn the tail and body of the pancreas to the right stripping the splenic artery and vein from its posterior surface and identify the vessels passing to the gland from them. On the posterior surface of the pancreas, make a cut into the gland parallel to and close to the superior and inferior margins of the body. Pick away the lobules of the gland between the cuts to expose the grayish white duct and the interlobular ducts draining into the main duct. Features The pancreas, pan equals all, press equals flesh, is a gland that is partly exocrine and partly endocrine. The exocrine part secretes the digestive pancreatic juice, and the endocrine part secretes hormones, e.g. insulin. It is soft, lobulated and elongated organ location. The pancreas lies more or less transversely across the posterior abdominal wall, at the level of first and second lumbar vertebrae. Size and shape It is J-shaped or retort-shaped, set obliquely. The bowl of the retort represents its head, and the stem of the retort, its neck, body, and tail. It is about 15 to 20 cm long, 2.5 to 3.8 cm broad and 1.2 to 1.8 cm thick and weighs about 90 g. The pancreas is divided, from right to left, into head, neck, body, and the tail. The head is enlarged and lies within the concavity of the duodenum. The tail reaches the hilum of the spleen. The entire organ lies posterior to the stomach separated from it by the lesser SAE. External features The head has three borders, superior, inferior and right lateral, two SFLR slash aces, anterior and posterior, and one process, called the uncinate process, which projects from the lower and left part of the head towards the left. Relations Three borders the superior border is overlapped by the first part of the duodenum and is related to the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. The inferior border is related to the third part of the duodenum and to the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. The right lateral border is related to the second part of the duodenum, the terminal part of the bile duct and the anastomosis between the two pancreatic duodenal arteries. Two surfaces, the anterior surface, is related from above downwards, one the first part of duodenum. Two transverse colon jejunum which is separated from it by peritoneum. The posterior surface is related to, one inferior vena cava. Two terminal part of renal veins. Three right crus of diaphragm. One for bile duct which runs downwards and to the right and is often embedded in the substance of pancreas. Uncinate process. It is related anteriorly to the superior mesenteric vessels, and posteriorly to the aorta.neck of the pancreas. This is the slightly constricted part of the pancreas between its head and body. It is directed forwards, upwards, and to the left. It has two surfaces, anterior and posterior. Relations The anterior SXR slash ACE is related to, 1, the peritoneum covering the posterior wall of the lesser sac, 2. The pylorus. The posterior surface, is related to the termination of the superior mesenteric vein and the beginning of the portal vein. Body of the pancreas. The body of the pancreas is elongated. It extends from its neck to the tail. It passes towards the left with a slight upward and backward inclination. External features. It is triangular on cross section, and has three borders, anterior, superior, and inferior. A part of the body projects upwards beyond the rest of the superior border, a little to the left of the neck. This projection is known as the tuber omen tail. Relations Three borders The anterior border provides attachment to the root of the transverse mesocolon. The superior border is related to coeliac trunk over the tuber omen tail, the hepatic artery to the right, and the splenic artery to the left. The inferior border is related to the superior mesenteric vessels at its right end. Three surfaces. The anterior surface is concave and is directed forwards and upwards. It is covered by peritoneum, and is related to the lesser sac and to the stomach. The posterior surface is devoid of peritoneum, and is related to, 
8th aorta with the origin of superior mesenteric artery. B. Left cruce of diaphragm. C. Left suprarenal gland. D. Left kidney. E. Left renal vessels. F. Splenic vein. The inferior surface is covered by peritoneum, and is related to, 1. The duodeno-jejunal flexure. 2. Coils of jejunum. 3. The left colic flexure. Tail of the pancreas. This is the left end of the pancreas. It lies in the lionorenal ligament together with the splenic vessels. It comes into contact with the lower part of the gastric surface of the spleen. Ducts of the pancreas. The exocrine pancreas is drained by two ducts, main and accessory. 1. The pancreatic duct, or duct of Wiersung lies near the posterior surface of the pancreas and is recognized easily by its white color. It begins at the tail, runs towards the right through the body, and bends at the neck to run downwards, backwards, and to the right in the head. 2. Its lumen is about 3 mm in diameter. 3. It receives many small tributaries which join it at right angles to its long axis forming what has been described as a herring bone pattern. 4. Within the head of the pancreas the pancreatic duct is related to the bile duct which lies on its right side. The two ducts enter the wall of the second part of the duodenum, and join to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla of Vater which opens by a narrow mouth on the summit of the major duodenal pumpus slash slash o, 8 to 10 cm distal to the pylorus. 5. Accessory pancreatic duct, also called the duct of Santorini. Begins in the lower part of the head, crosses the front of the main duct with which it communicates and opens into the duodenum at the minor duodenal papilla. The papilla of accessory pancreatic duct is situated 6 to 8 cm distal to the pylorus. The opening of the accessory duct lies cranial and ventral to that of the 6 main duct. The two ducts remind the double origin of pancreas from the ventral and dorsal pancreatic buds. 7. Arterial supply. The pancreas is supplied. 1. Mainly by pancreatic branches of the splenic artery. 2. The superior pancreatic otoadenal artery. 3. The inferior pancreatic otoadenal artery. Like the duodenum the pancreas develops at the junction of the foregut and midgut, and is supplied by branches derived from both the coeliac and superior mesenteric arteries. Venous drainage. Veins drain into splenic, superior mesenteric and portal veins. Lymphotic drainage. Lymphatics follow the arteries and drain into the pancreatic osplenic, coeliac, and superior mesenteric groups of lymph nodes. Nerve supply. The vagus or PRA sympathetic and splanchnic sympathetic nerves supply the pancreas through the plex uses around its arteries. Sympathetic nerves are vasomotor. Parasympathetic nerves control pancreatic secretion. Secretion is also influenced by the hormone cholecystokinin produced by cells in the duodenal epithelium. The pancreatic juice contains various enzymes that help in the digestion of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Functions Digestive, pancreatic juice contains many digestive enzymes of which the important ones are as follows, trips and breaks down proteins to lower peptides. Amylase hydrolysis starch and glycogen to disaccharides. Lipase breaks down fat into fatty acids and glycerol. 2. Endocrine, carbohydrates are the immediate source of energy. Insulin helps in utilizations of sugar in the cells. Deficiency of insulin results in hyperglycemia. The disease is called diabetes mellitus. There appears to be poverty in plenty. 3. Pancreatic gus. It provides appropriate alkaline medium, pH 8, for the activity of the pancreatic enzymes. Histology 1. The exocrine part is a serous gland, made up of tubular acini lined by pyramidal cells with basal round nuclei, containing zymogen granules. It secretes the digestive pancreatic juice. 2. The endocrine part of pancreas is made up of microscopic elements called the pancreatic islets of Langerhans. These are small isolated masses of cells distributed throughout the pancreas. They are most numerous in the tail. The islets have various types of cells the most important of which are the beta cells which are granular and basophilic, forming about 80% of the cell population. They produce insulin. 
Other types of cells are alpha cells with subtype A1 and A2. These are granular and acidophilic and form about 20% of the cell population. A1 cells belong to enterochromaffin group and secrete pancreatic gastrin and serotonin. A2 cells secrete glucagon. Development It arises as a larger dorsal bud and a smaller ventral bud. These soon fuse to form the pancreas. Ventral bud forms uncinate process and an inferior part of head of pancreas. The dorsal bud forms part of the head, whole of neck, body, and tail of pancreas. The duct of ventral bud taps the duct of dorsal pancreatic bud near its neck and opens into the duodenum as the main pancreatic duct. The proximal part of duct of dorsal pancreatic bud forms the accessory pancreatic duct. Developmental anomalies of the pancreas include the following. A. An annular pancreas encircling the second part of the duodenum. An annular pancreas may be the cause of duodenal obstruction. Accessory pancreatic tissue may be present at various sites. These include the wall of the duodenum, the jejunum, the ileum, or of Meckel's diverticulum B. Inversion of pancreatic ducts. In this condition, the accessory duct is larger than the main duct, and the main drainage of the pancreas is through the minor duodenal papilla. Deficiency of insulin causes the disease diabetes mellitus. Deficiency of pancreatic enzymes causes digestive disturbances. Carcinoma is common in the head of the pancreas. Pressure over the posteriorly placed bile duct leads to persistent obstructive jaundice. It may press upon the portal vein, causing ascites, or may involve the stomach, causing pyloric obstruction. Acute pancreatitis is a serious disease. It may be a complication of mumps. Pancreatic cyst presents as a large fixed tumor in the upper part of abdomen along the median plane. They are often symptomless. Pancreatic pain is felt in the back as well as in the front of abdomen. Pancreatitis results in collection of fluid in the lesser SAE pseudocyst of pancreas. Annular pancreas is a developmental anomaly where a ring of pancreatic tissue surrounds and obstructs the duodenum. Pain from pancreatitis, this pain is poorly localized. Pain is referred to epigastrium. Pain is also referred to posterior paravertebral region and around the lower thoracic vertebrae, due to inflammation of soft tissues of retroperitoneum. Their afferents are being sent through lower intercostal nerves. Pancreatitis, it may be primary or may be due to gallstones in the common bile duct. Superior mesenteric vessels are lying behind body of pancreas and in front of its uncinate process. Pancreatitis may cause inflammatory aneurysm of the artery and slash or thrombosis of the vein. Since pancreas has profuse blood supply, it is prone to hemorrhage. Blood can appear in the flanks or in the groins. It may also enter bare area of liver to run forward in the falciform ligament and reach around umbilicus. Acute pancreatitis may cause gastric stasis and vomiting. The autonomic supply to midgut may be affected resulting in paralytic ileus. Sometimes fluid resulting from pancreatic inflammation may collect in the lesser SAE of peritoneum, called a pseudocyst. It needs to be drained. Pancreas resection, it is a difficult and complicated procedure. Only resection of its head and neck is possible. Liver liver, dissection. Pull the liver downwards and divide the anterior layers of the coronary and left triangular ligaments. Identify the inferior vena cava between the liver and the diaphragm and separate the liver downwards from inferior vena cava. If the inferior vena cava happens to be deeply buried in the liver, divide it and remove a segment with the liver. Expose the structures in the porta hepatis and follow them to their entry into the liver. Identify the viscera related to the inferior surface of the liver and see their demarcations on the liver. Explore the extent of right and left pleural cavities and pericardium related to the superior and anterior surfaces of liver, though separated from it by the diaphragm. Cut the structures close to the porta hepatis and separate all the peritoneal ligaments and folds of the liver. Remove the liver from the body. Identify its various borders, surfaces, lobes. Features, the liver is a large, solid, gland situated in the right upper quadrant of the abdominal cavity. In the living subject, the liver is reddish-brown in color, 
soft in consistency, and very friable. It weighs about 1,600 g in males and about 1,300 g in females. Location, the liver occupies the whole of the right hypochondrium, the greater part of the epigastrium, and extends into the left hypochondrium reaching up to the left lateral line. From the above it will be obvious that most of the liver is covered by ribs and costal cartilages, except in the upper part of the epigastrium where it is in contact with the anterior abdominal wall. The liver is the largest gland in the body. It secretes bile and performs various other metabolic functions. The liver is also called the hepar from which we have the adjective hepatic applied to many structures connected with the organ. External features. The liver is wedge-shaped. It resembles a four-sided pyramid laid on one side point five surfaces. It has five surfaces, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, and right. Out of these the inferior surface is well defined because it is demarcated, anteriorly, by a sharp inferior border. The other surfaces are more or less continuous with each other and are imperfectly separated from one another by ill-defined, rounded borders. One prominent border. The inferior border is sharp anteriorly where it separates the anterior surface from the inferior surface. It is somewhat rounded laterally where it separates the right surface from the inferior surface. The sharp anterior part is marked by a an interlobar notch or the notch for the ligamentum teres. B a cystic notch for the fundus of the gallbladder. In the epigastrium, the inferior border extends from the left eighth costal cartilage to the right ninth costal cartilage. Two lobes, embryologically, the liver grows as a ventral diverticulum from the junction of foregut and the midgut into the ventral mesogastrium, the caudal part of the septum transversum, the cranial part forms the diaphragm. The same diverticulum forms the gallbladder and bile ducts as well. The ligamentum teres hepatis is the obliterated umbilical vein, which joins the left portal vein, the ligamentum venosum is the obliterated ductus venosus, which joins the left portal vein to left hepatic vein. The upper surface of the liver is percussed at the level of the fifth intercostal space. Superior, anterior, posterior, and right surfaces of the liver are continuous with each other and are related to the diaphragm and anterior abdominal wall. The anterior surface is separated from the inferior, visceral, surface by a sharp anterior, inferior, border that is clinically palpable on deep inspiration. The inferior surface is related to the hepatic flexure, the area where the vertical ascending, right, colon takes a right angle turn to become the horizontal transverse colon, right kidney, transverse colon, duodenum, and stomach. The gallbladder straddles the undersurfaces of liver segments IVB and V. There is an H-shaped fissure on the inferior surface of the liver. The right vertical arm of the H is formed by the gallbladder anteriorly and the inferior vena cava, IVC, posteriorly, it is incomplete, with the caudate process between the two. The left vertical arm of the H is formed by the ligamentum teres hepatis in front and the ligamentum venosum behind. The transverse limb of the is the porta hepatis, hilum, a 5 cm transverse fissure, slit, on the undersurface of the liver with the quadrate lobe in front and the caudate lobe behind. It contains the common hepatic duct, CHD, in front and to the right, the proper hepatic artery in front and to the left, and the portal vein behind, enclosed in the hepatoduodenal ligament, HDL, composed of two layers of lesser omentum. Anatomic divisions. Anatomically, the liver is divided into a larger right lobe and a smaller left lobe by the falciform ligament, see the image below. This division, however, is of no use surgically. From a surgical point of view, the liver is divided into right and left lobes of almost equal, 60 colon 40, size by a major fissure, cantilized line, running from the gallbladder fossa in front to the IVC fossa behind. This division is based on the right and left branches of the hepatic artery and the portal vein, see the image below, with tributaries of bile, hepatic, ducts following. The middle hepatic vein, MHV, lies in Cantley's line. The left pedicle, left hepatic artery LHA, left branch of the portal vein, and left hepatic duct, 
has a longer extrahepatic course than the right. Relations Peritoneal relations Most of the liver is covered by peritoneum. The areas not covered by peritoneum are as follows. 1. A triangular bare area, on the posterior surface of the right lobe, limited by the superior and inferior layers of the coronary ligament and by the right triangular ligament. 2. The groove for the inferior vena cava, on the posterior surface of the right lobe of the liver, between the caudate lobe and the bare area. 3. The fossa for the gallbladder which lies on the inferior surface of the right lobe to the right of the quadrate lobe. 4. The lesser omentum. Visceral relations. Inferior surface. The anterior surface is triangular and slightly convex. It is related to the xiphoid process and to the anterior abdominal wall in the median plane, and to diaphragm on each side. The diaphragm separates the surface from the pleura above the level of a line drawn from the xiphosternal joint to the tenth rib in the mid-axillary line, and from the lung above the level of a line from the same joint to the eighth rib. The solar form ligament is attached to the surface a little to the right of the median plane. Posterior surface The posterior surface is triangular. Its middle part shows a deep concavity for the vertebral column. Other relations are as follows. 0 1 The bare area is related to the diaphragm, and to the right suprarenal gland near the lower end of the groove for the inferior vena cava. 2 The groove for the inferior vena cava lodges the upper part of the vessel, and its floor is pierced by the hepatic veins. 3 The caudate lobe lies in the superior recess of the lesser sac. It is related to the crura of the diaphragm above the aortic opening, to the right inferior phrenic artery, and to the coeliac trunk. 4 The upper part of the ligamentum venosum is very deep and extends to the front of the caudate lobe. It contains two layers of the lesser omentum. The ligamentum venosum lies on its floor. The ligamentum venosum is a remnant of the ductus venosus of fetal life, it is connected below to the left branch of the portal vein, and above to the left hepatic vein near its entry into the inferior vena cava. 5. The posterior surface of the left lobe is marked by the esophageal impression. Superior surface The superior surface is quadrilateral and shows a concavity in the middle. This is the cardiac impression. On each side of the impression the surface is convex to fit the dome of the diaphragm. The diaphragm separates the surface from the pericardium and the heart in the middle, and from pleura and lung on each side. Inferior surface The interior surface is quadrilateral and is directed downwards, backwards, and to the left. It is marked by impressions for neighboring viscera as follows. 1. On the inferior surface of the left lobe there is a large concave gastric impression. The left lobe also bears a raised area that comes in contact with the lesser omentum, it is called the omentale fusser to the assure for the ligamentum teres passes from the inferior border to the left end of the porta hepatis. The ligamentum teres represents the obliterated left umbilical vein. 3. The quadrate lobe is related to the lesser omentum, the pylorus, and the first part of the duodenum. When the stomach is empty the quadrate lobe is related to the first part of the duodenum and to a part of the transverse colon. 4. The fossa for the gallbladder lies to the right of the quadrate lobe. 5. To the right of this fossa the inferior surface of the right lobe bears the colic impression for the hepatic flexure of the colon, the renal impression for the right kidney, and the duodenal impression for the second part of the duodenum. Right surface. The right surface is quadrilateral and convex. It is related to the diaphragm opposite the 7th to 11th ribs in the mid-axillary line. It is separated by the diaphragm from the pleura up to the 10th rib, and from the lung up to the 8th rib. Thus, the upper one-third of the surface is related to the diaphragm, the pleura, and the lung, the middle one-third, to the diaphragm and the costodiaphragmatic recess of the pleura, and the lower one-third to the diaphragm alone. Blood Supply the liver receives 20% of its blood supply through the hepatic artery, and 80% through the portal vein. Before entering the liver, both the hepatic artery and the portal vein divide into right and left branches. Within the liver, they redivide to form segmental vessels which further divide to form interlobular vessels which run in the portal canals. Further ramifications of the interlobular branches open into the hepatic sinusoids. 
thus the hepatic arterial blood mixes with the portal venous blood in the sinusoids. There are no anastomoses between adjoining hepatic arterial territories and hence each branch is an end artery. Venous drainage, hepatic sinusoids drain into interlobular veins, which join to form sublobular veins. These in turn unite to form the hepatic veins which drain directly into the inferior vena cava. These veins provide great support to the liver, besides the intraabdominal pressure. The hepatic veins are arranged in two groups, upper and lower. The upper group consists of three large veins right, left and middle, which emerge through the upper part of the groove for the inferior vena cava, and open directly into the vena cava. These veins keep the liver suspended. The lower group consists of a variable number of small veins from the right lobe and the caudate lobe which emerge through the lower part of the cable groove and open into the vena cava. Microscopically the tributaries of hepatic veins, i.e. central veins are seen as separate channels from those of the portal radicles. Lymphotic drainage, the superficial lymphatics of the liver run on the surface of the organ beneath the peritoneum, and terminate in cable, hepatic, pericardial and coeliac lymph nodes. Some vessels from the coronary ligament may directly join the thoracic duct. The deep lymphatics end partly in the nodes around the end of the inferior vena cava, and partly in the hepatic nodes. Nerve supply, the liver receives its nerve supply from the hepatic plexus which contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic or vagal fibers. Nerves also reach the liver through its various peritoneal ligaments. Hepatic segments, on the basis of the intrahepatic distribution of the hepatis artery, the portal vein and the biliary ducts, the liver can be divided into the right and left functional lobes. These do not correspond to the anatomical lobes of the liver. The physiological lobes are separated by a plane passing on the anterosuperior surface along a line joining the cystic notch to the groove for the inferior vena cava. On the inferior surface the plane passes through the iosa for the gallbladder, and on the posterior surface it passes through the middle of the caudate lobe. The right lobe is subdivided into anterior and posterior segments, and the left lobe into medial and lateral segments. Thus there are four segments in the liver. A right anterior, V and 7. B right posterior, 6 and 7. C left lateral, 2 and 4. D left medial, I and 4. The hepatic segments are of surgical importance. The hepatic veins tend to be intersegmental in their course. Functions Liver is an indispensable gland of the body. One metabolism of carbohydrates, fat, and proteins. Two synthesis of bile and prothrombin. Three excretion of drugs, toxins, poisons, cholesterol, bile pigments, and heavy metals. 4. Protective by conjugation, destruction, phagocytosis, antibody formation, and excretion. 5. Storage of glycogen, iron, fat, vitamin A and D histology. Liver is covered by glycens capsule. In the pig there are hexagonal lobules with portal radicles at 3-5 corners. Each radical contains bile ductule, branch each of portal vein and hepatic artery. Central vein lies in the center and all around the central vein are the hepatocytes in form of laminae. On one side of the lamina is the sinusoid and on the other side is a bile canaliculus. Portal lobule seen in human is triangular in shape with three central veins at the sides and portal tract in the center. The liver acinus is defined as the liver parenchyma around a preterminal branch of hepatic arteriole between two adjacent central veins. The liver acinus is the functional unit of liver. Blood reaches the acinus via branches of portal vein and hepatic artery to open into the sinusoids to reach the central vein. On the other hand, the flow of bile is along bile canaliculi, bile ductules, and the interlobular bile ducts. Hepatocytes in zone I close to preterminal branch are better supplied by oxygen, nutrients, and toxins. The liver cells in zone 3 close to central veins are relatively hypoxic while cells in zone 2 are intermediate in oxygen supply. Histology of the liver can be studied by liver biopsy which is done from right lateral surface. Development From the caudal end of foregut, an endodermal hepatic bud arises during third week of development. The bud elongates cranially. It gives rise to a small bud on its right side. 
This is called pars cystica and the main part is pars hepatica. Pars cystica forms the gallbladder and the cystic duct which drains into common hepatic duct, CHD. The epithelial cells of pars hepatica proliferate to form the purenchymo. These cells mix up with umbilical and vitellin veins to form hepatic sinusoids. Cupfer cells and blood cells are formed from the mesoderm of septum transversum. In the infrasternal angle, the liver is readily accessible to examination on percussion, though it is normally not palpable due to the normal tone of the recti muscles and the softness of the liver. Normally in the median plane the inferior border of the liver lies on the transpyloric plane, about a hand's breadth below the xiphosternal joint. In women and children this border usually lies at a slightly lower level and tends to project downwards for a short distance below the right costal margin. It enlarges towards right iliac fossa. Spleen also enlarges towards right iliac fossa. Inflammation of the liver is referred to as hepatitis. It may be infective hepatitis or amoebic hepatitis. Under certain conditions, e.g. malnutrition, liver tissue undergoes fibrosis and shrinks. This is called cirrhosis of the liver. Liver biopsy needs to be done in certain clinical conditions. Liver biopsy needle is passed through right ninth intercostal space. It traverses both pleural and peritoneal cavities. Liver is the common site of metastatic tumors. Venous blood from GID with primary tumor drains via portal vein into the liver. Liver receives blood from hepatic artery and portal vein. Both these vessels lie in the free margin of lesser omentum. Bleeding from the liver can be stopped by compressing the free edge of lesser omentum. This is called Pringle's maneuver. If bleeding still continues it is likely that interior vena cava is also injured. Liver resection, liver resection for primary and secondary tumors is done commonly. 80% of liver mass can be removed safely. Liver can regrow to its original size within 6 to 12 months after resection. Major resections follow the planes between segments and are anatomical. Liver transpionation, it can be done in patients with end-stage liver disease. The implant of the graft requires an inferior cable anastomosis, followed by anastomosis of the portal vein. Finally the arterial and biliary anastomoses are performed. Sometimes a right hemi liver comprising segments V to segments 8 can be removed from a healthy donor and transplanted into the needy patient. Transjugular intraparenchymal portosystemic shunt, tips, for portal hypertension. In severe portal hypertension, balloon catheters are introduced from internal jugular vein superior vena cava inferior vena cava apodic veins liver tissue are portal vein branch. Liver cirrhosis causes caput medusae at the umbilicus. Mnemonic spleen dimension weight surface anatomy, 1,3,5,7,9,11. Spleen dement ions are 1 inch thick 3 inch wide 5 inches long. Weight is 7 ounces. Underling ribs 9 to 11. Structures of porta hepatis VADV portal vein. A hepatic artery. Dehepatic duct in case of rupture of spleen it may be removed. Before cutting the linearenal ligament, the tail of pancreas and splenic vessels need to be identified and not be injured. Spleen moves up and down with respiration. It is mesodermal in origin. Pancreas mainly develops from dorsal pancreatic bud. Only a part of head and its uncinate process develops from the ventral pancreatic bud. Islet of Langerhans are maximal in the tail of pancreas. Portal vein is formed by the union of splenic and superior mesenteric veins behind the neck of pancreas. Liver is the largest gland of the body. Liver is kept in position by the upper and lower groups hepatic veins which drain into the inferior vena cava. The bare area of liver is one of the sites of portosystemic anastomosis. There are eight hepatic segment. Liver enlarges downwards right iliac fossa. The spleen also enlarges downwards and obliquely towards right iliac fossa. It is prevented from descending to left side by phrenicoccalic ligament.